Good morning and welcome back to Posse Adventures. Welcome back to the Brisbane Ranges on this beautiful Sunday morning. We've owned this van now um, for probably just over a year, literally a year. Um, and today's going to be uh, just a how-to video really. <clears throat> the, the van's probably done 10,000 kilometres in that time. It's been all right around northern Queensland and up until this point very little maintenance has been done to it. Uh, so it's time to check the bearings, repack them, um, adjust the brakes and just give it a quick once over. So what I'm going to do, these are jobs that really anyone with some technical knowledge is, is able to do. So I'm just going to talk through how I do it um, and obviously maybe that would help people out there that are thinking of doing this job themselves. Stick with me, we'll see how we go. So I guess the first thing that we should be um, just safety wise should be reminding you guys of is to work on the hubs and taking off the drums we're going to need to release the handbrake on the van um, now I'm just going to turn the camera around I'm planning on using uh, the jack that came with the van for two reasons one is it's always good to know how to use it um, so this is a prime time when you don't need it um, specifically you're not in an emergency situation to dig it out and work out how it works um, second thing is obviously we're releasing the handbrake so we're going to need to chock these wheels to prevent the, the, uh, the van from being able to roll. Um, also I'm planning on putting some axle jacks, axle stands underneath just to collect the van in the event of the, of the jack failing which is also a wise, wise move. Uh, those of you that haven't got axle jacks you could probably just drop the legs uh, and extend them. Um, would stop it coming down onto your legs if it if it were to fall. Um, a wise move. Um, also, just uh, think about what you're jacking on. Um, in my case, we're jacking on the grass paddock, which is not probably ideal. Um, so what I've got uh, for my four-wheel driving days, I'm just going to kick it under here, is I've got a high-lift jack mount. I'm going to stick that under the jack um, just to stop the jack from sinking into the ground. So let's get this thing set up, uh, release the handbrake, and get the car jack, uh, get the van jacked up. Let's go. Okay, so the van's jacked up. So any of you guys that have got the Franklin van or something similar that get the jack that comes with it, and you're wondering how to jack up the side of the van, um, basically this point here, that's your jacking point. Same both sides. Your jack's got a little hook in it, um, and the idea is you just hook the hook into there. So this is hollow underneath and then crank it up. Now I've used a high lift jack base just to stop it sinking in the ground. I, this ground's pretty solid anyway so I don't think it would have done but just to be on the safe side. The wheels only just need to be off the ground so you don't have to go too mad they're only just off the ground. That's enough. Obviously the back one will be slightly higher. It's jacks from the back first. So next stage let's get the wheels off um, and we'll get have a look and see what the drums come off like. I've, I'll be honest I've not serviced caravan drums before so I don't know what size the hub nut is or uh, I know they're tapered bearings so um, let's have a look and we'll go from there. Okay so the van's jacked up. I've taken the um, the little center caps or ashtrays as they like to call them off the center of the wheel. Um, underneath I've put a couple of axle jacks just in the event that uh, the van were to fall they should collect the van okay so next thing really is to uh, check the bearing play just to see how they were which are um, very easy to do I'm just gonna set up the tripod so to check the bearing play you can hear there's a tiny little bit of play in it that way and there is a little bit of play there. Same on this one. This one's not quite as bad. So let's get the wheels off. Um, the reason why I've got the axle stands, look where my legs are, straight underneath the van. In the event of it falling, this will come down and crush my leg. Uh, that's the reason why I put the axle stands in there. It's very difficult to work on a caravan and not have your legs tucked underneath. Um, anyway, let's get the wheels off and we'll go from there. Nice one. 
Screwdriver, just give it a little tap around the outside. Work it slowly, like so. Once you get it moving away, you can just work your way around. There we go. And off it comes. Let's put that way somewhere safe. Now what we've got is we've got a split pin in here and a castellated nut. So if I move this a bit closer so you can see. Okay. Hopefully you get a good view on that. So yep. Yeah. So first thing. Open the split pin. Now you're going to be replacing this pin. You don't reuse really them. it comes just to get in there for now and then these these are only done up just slightly over you know literally hand tight to get rid of that play all you want when you do these up once you're finished is to get these tight enough to take the play out so that would have been to tighten this one up it would have been one castellated section it would have tightened that up anyway let's undo it so don't don't overdo these because they will seize up And these are the important bits not to get too covered in crap. So that's the outer bearing and washer, which I'm just going to put in here for now. Let me slide it off. Off it comes. And the inner bearing is behind this dust cover. So what we want to do in here is probably give it a little bit of brake cleaner, clean it all up so that we can inspect the brakes properly. Have a look inside the drum, inspect that. The rough area inside the drum here is quite normal. It's where the magnet makes contact with the drum. So obviously these brakes are electronically operated and this huge magnet is what operates it. Okay, I'm gonna get some brake cleaner and give this all a clean up. Okay. So what I've done, I just popped out the, uh, the seal at the back here. Getting these bearings out. These bearings are in pretty good order. Um, giving them a good clean off. And obviously then I'll be repacking them with grease. But you need to get as much of the old stuff out as you can. Just hence the reason why you need either plenty of degreaser or plenty of brake cleaner, whichever, whatever you can get your hands on really. They'll both do the job. And plenty of paper towel. It's just really a case of spraying it in, giving it a spin so it di dilutes all the grease and gets it out. Like so. That one's good. I'll just pop it on top of the paper towel. Get the other one. Same again. Just a case of continually keep doing that. I mean, obviously we've got four to do, but you want to get these bearings as clean as you can get them, as grease-free as possible, so that they can be re-greased.
I'm not just shy of the paper. And it is really just a case of taking your time. You can feel when they're pretty much grease free. When you spin them, they spin quite freely. When they've got grease in, they don't. So that's that one. That one's good. Probably a little bit more on this one. This is still quite dirty like on the inside. As I say, it's a fairly cheap job. These cans of uh, brake cleaner are six or seven dollars a can. One per axles, probably what you want. One per, sorry, one per hub is probably what you want. So that's pretty good. Same thing with the washer. Give it a good wipe off. You want to be able to inspect it and make sure that everything's in reasonably good order. That's that one. And then inside the hub, it's really a case of sticking your fingers. Let's just move this down so you can see what I'm doing. Sticking your fingers in and pushing out all that grease. Same again. it in there and just push it all out. I say the reason why you need plenty of uh, paper towel for this job is it is it is a mucky horrible job. That's why the caravan service sent us charge to do it and someone's going to get covered in grease. Okay, there we go. She's pretty good. Okay, so I've got my trusty helper here now holding the camera for me, so I can probably get some better footage for you guys. So once you've got the drum off, what you find yourself with Obviously you've got your brake shoes there. The magnet on the bottom. This magnet is what activates the shoes. So when you put your foot on the brake in the car, the brake controller sends signal, signal to this activating this magnet, which will draw it out and obviously in direction of rotation forward. That will apply the brakes. Inside the brake drum, let's turn it around, you will see an area which is quite scuffed, that's where the magnet makes contact. So we've cleaned up the inside of the drum to a degree, not that well to be fair. That's degreaser. You just want to get any grease and oil once you've done the bearing and just wipe it out, like so. Now I've already done the front, the front drum, this side. And now, and I've wiped out the inside and got the old grease out. So now we have a bearing here, which I've cleaned with degreaser and got it all nice and spinning freely. So now what we need to do is repack this bearing with grease and to do that I use this device just here and basically the way this works the bearing sits in exactly the same orientation as the cone like so top one goes on top try not to throw it on the ground The reason why I put the tarp underneath is I don't want it covered in grass and bits of muck. Because invariably it's greasy and slippery and you're going to drop stuff. 
So you screw these two bits together. I am expecting the um, grease gun to run out of grease just about now. Let's just take off all the extra grease that's there. Get rid of that. That's from the previous bearing we don't need. So we can see what's going on. Okay. You centralize the bearing as best you can in within the cone. It will self-center to a degree. But only to a degree. There we go. Just get rid of that because I don't want to be kneeling on it particularly. Get some fresh. Now, as I say, you do need a huge amount of paper towel to do this job or rags, whichever. Once you've got it all nipped together nice and tight, you find your grease gun. Plug it onto the nipple. Just on the top there. Now this is out of grease, exactly as I thought it would be. So we're just going to change the cartridge. <sighs> Bit too much suction. Top off, stick it in there, it can go in there, that's rubbish. They are the worst thing on the planet, grease guns, they're so dirty. However, they serve a purpose. Now, I need something to bleed it. Oh, no, I don't. This one's... Okay, she's bled. Right. Where were we? And then, it is kind of difficult, you've got to kind of, if you can film in here, darling, so we can see what happens. So we keep pumping away with the gun. And there we go, and you can start to see the grease coming through the bearing, pushing all the old grease out, and filling it with fresh grease. Just keep going until you start to see it coming through the colour of the grease, which is red, and coming up between the rollers on the bearing, which it's doing now. There we go. Should be able to pop that out of there. it apart, wake the bearing out of there and you can see that the bearing will just give it a good rub with the fresh grease. Now you will see some black grease in there, I mean it's inevitable, it's an old bearing but the point is the majority of the grease has been pulled out. Pop the bearing back in and the next thing is this hole underneath, we need to fill the recess with some grease. So I'm just going to wipe my hands. And to be honest, you can do it with a grease gun. But I've already changed the cartridge now, so I shall... Mm. 
use this one and just work out a big finger full of grease. In it goes, bearing back on top. A little bit on the shaft. Resist the temptation to wipe your nose. Okay. So, let's just clear the area. And we'll pop this bearing back on the hub. Make sure that your magnet's on properly. push it on, make sure that bearing doesn't drop off and fall in the muck. Next thing, the washer, give that a wipe off. Now when you're doing this job, the seal on the inside, I, I've reused mine, but I would have to say, if I was doing this job again, I wouldn't be reusing it, I'd be putting a new seal on it. And certainly before our big trip next year, I'll be putting either new seals on this or new bearings and seals. Just purely because these bearings, they needed adjusting. They weren't horrendous, but they did need adjusting. Uh, the grease was pretty black on them. So it's nice to get fresh grease in there. However, I have, I have made a bit of a kink in the bear, in the um, the seals because they weren't what I thought they'd be. I thought they would just be a rubber seal, uh, and they're not. They're a metal seal on a, uh, a or sorry, so should I say they are a metal a rubber seal, but they're on a metal frame, and you can't get the metal frame off without damaging them. So I'm sure they'll be fine in the short term. Okay, now, to do these up tight, basically, using this shifter, you're not holding it at the end here. You're just strangling it, because these don't need to be tight. Do it up, nip it up, just not specifically tight, just a bit more than hand tight. Give the bearing a little bit of a rotate, just to seat the grease, and allow the bearing to seat into place. Then back it off, and then, you just want to nip it up to the point where you get tension, which is that first one there. So I'm not going any more, any more beyond that. It is something that as a mechanic, you get a feel for. But the simple answer is, don't go too tight. If you go too tight, you're going to be sorry because it will seize up. Just putting a split pin in, that stops it from uh, being able to spin loose. And then you've got your cap. This is just a dust cap. Just give it a quick wipe off of the grease that was around it. And then dust cap goes across. And get a tap in stick. And there we go, that one is good to go. Now when I put the wheel on, we'll be able to see whether there's any play in it, which I don't anticipate there will be. The next thing I need to do is not so much fun. I just need to adjust the handbrake, which I shall take the camera from Tanya a second. I'll see if I can get it in here so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, Let's see if I can get it. Okay, 
tripod out. Okay, with a bit of luck, you guys can see what I'm up to. So in the back of the drum, there are two little inspection plugs. Get them out, one there. And another one right next to it, just there. Okay, could you pass me a brake cleaner, one that's got some in? So you take out these two plugs and just inside here is um, like a little wheel. And I'm just gonna, it's a good idea to give it a squirt with brake cleaner and I'll tell you why. It makes life a lot easier seeing it when it's got a little bit of a shine to it. And also the brake cleaner acts kind of like a lubricant, helps it to move. Now, I'll see if I can get some light on the subject for you. I doubt you can see it too well. But basically, yeah, you kind of, you can see it through one. And then with these, they, you basically have to rotate them. Hang on. You're just <laughs> trying to get in there. Okay. Just rotating these. And I think I'm going. Yeah. So I'm pretty sure with this one you go up. So I'm rotating. There's like little steps in the wheel. And what I'm doing is just getting the screwdriver under the step and rotating the wheel upwards. Upwards. And you just keep going and keep going and keep going until the drum won't turn. Come on. It is fiddly. Still got movement in the drum. Keep going. Still got movement. And you'll see there's teeth and you put the screwdriver in the teeth and you basically just flip it up one tooth at a time. And you just keep going and keep going. Okay, now you can see that the drum has stopped, so I've got the shoes hard against the drum. Then all you do is each tooth, you come back three. So you find the screwdriver point where you can get in there. There's one, there's one tooth down, up above it, two, and three. Now your drums will spin and you adjusted the same as you were with the other one, because the same way I did that. You need to do that on all four. They all need to be adjusted the same. Um, put the plugs back in. Otherwise you'll find that your brakes will apply at different rates, which is not good. They've got, all got to apply at the same rate. So lock it up till the drum locks and then back three, three notches on your thing and you'll find that it's free spinning. You can hear them just brushing there, which is fine. And then you'll get a nice even brake operation. Anyway, grease nipples. 
here and here. There's also one at the back on that side. So these need to be greased as well. A little bit of degreaser. Give them a little bit of a degrease off. Clean her off. There we go. On with the grease gum and pump some grease in there. Fresh grease in there and then just get your finger Okay, bit on this one. Bit of fresh grease. Of that one. And basically, everything you can see to grease. Just give it a give it a pay. It just stops all the creaking and groaning that you get on these when you take them off graded tracks. Okay, so that's everything done on the van. I've taken the bearings out. Uh, we've cleaned them, washed out all the old grease, repacked them, and re-tensioned them back up. Taken all the play out of all the wheels. Uh, I've greased all the grease nipples on the suspension, so that should be a lot quieter. Uh, and now she's good to go for another six months or so. Um, fairly simple job, no reason to pay someone to do it for you, it's not hard. Um, it is mucky, um, but yeah, it's not a difficult job. Next weekend we're away on our four-wheel drive uh, Christmas get-together with the Werribee Four-Wheel Drive Club. So we're going to be heading out to Ararat to stay at uh, one of the members' bush properties um, for our Christmas party. Uh, we will be doing a couple of nights stopping on the way getting there because that's just the Saturday night into Sunday. So we'll be, um, I'll be stopping off at Mount Franklin on Thursday night for a one night layover, if you like, and then on to uh, another free camp, which I'll, uh, I'll let you know about when we get there. Anyway, thanks for watching. If you enjoy the, um, if you enjoy the channel, please like and subscribe um, and follow us. Cheers. Thank you.